your books, sir. I'm a wise deal. Some years ago, there was in the city of York a society of magicians. They met upon the third Wednesday of every month and read each other long, dull papers upon the history of English magic. They were gentlemen magicians, which is to say they had never harmed anyone by magic, nor had ever done anyone the slightest good. In fact, to the truth, not one of these magicians had ever cast the smallest spell, nor by magic caused one leaf to tremble upon a tree, made one mote of dust alter its course, or changed a single hair upon anyone's head. With this one minor reservation, they enjoyed a reputation as some of the wisest and most magical gentlemen in Yorkshire. Mr. Mr. Shigondas. Yes. <clears throat> ah. It has been no small inducement in my coming to York that your excellent and uh, distinguished society exists here. Uh, not to mention your extensive library of magical books. Uh, I have studied magic, gentlemen, for many years. The histories of the Raven King, the great magicians of long ago. I've read the new publications and even made my small contribution to their number. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, but I, but I have recently begun to wonder why the great feats of magic that I read about remain in the pages of my books and are not seen on the street or on the battlefield. I have begun to wonder why modern magicians are unable to work the magic that they write about. In short, gentlemen, I wish to know, why is magic no longer done in England? <laughs> it is a wrong question, Mr. Segundus. Magicians study magic the history of magic. We do not perform it. No. You don't expect an astronomer to create stars, <laughs> or a botanist to invent new flowers. No, 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 no. It is a child's question, I appreciate, but, uh, but no less. Classical less... magic, sir, is not a thing for the gentlemen of this society, nor any gentleman. I do hope that you have not been trying to cast spells, sir. <laughs> you told me certainly that there would be books coming in. You took a guinea from me. Good day to you, sir. Mr. Segundus, I say. Uh, Honeyfoot, I was there at the society last night. May I? I've made myself disagreeable. No, sir. I think you hit upon it quite correct. Why is magic no longer done? I cannot find it answered anywhere. Can you believe there are no books of magic to be had? In York. <laughs> books about magic are rare enough. Books of magic. Oh, my dear fellow. They're more precious than rubies. Even the society only has a few pages. I have tried everywhere else. The society is my last throw of the dice. Sir! We're growing stale. We need fresh opinions. Oh, I'm... I'm afraid that those books have been sold, sir. I reserved them. Yes, I am sorry for it, sir. Oh, it is no matter. But do you have anything upon the nature of clouds, rain, atmospheres? Yes, sir. Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's interesting. I'm most fascinated by clouds myself. Keep an eye open. <laughs> Mr. Secundus. <laughs> At least I can find the devil who keeps swiping my books. Uh, there. Norrell. Birdview Abbey. It is not an age for magic. Why then do you persist, sir? What is it? Tremendously dirty. From a street magician in London. A spell to join together articles which have been parted. Does it work? No. He was a vagabond, you see. Yellow curtain sort of fellow. Persuaded me to part with a rather large sum of money for that. And then he called me back. Said he'd tell me a secret for nothing. He told me that one day magic would be restored to England by two magicians. All prophecies are nonsense. I know. But it set me upon my present path. We are two magicians. 
John Segundus and Mr. Honeyfoot. Sounds well. One would expect him to pretend that I was one of the two, but in the end, he told me rather plainly that I was not. of the York Society of Magicians. I read your account of the careers of Martin Pale's fairy servants, sir. It's a creditable piece of work. Well, there was Master Fallowford, was there not? You left him out. In the minor spirit, but nevertheless. I never thought. I've never even heard of him. Forgive me, sir, but what a library. Yes, I forget. Of course, he is described in Ogath and Pickle's histories of their own dealings with Master Fallowthor, which you can scarcely have read. Well, you have that book. May we... may we be permitted to... Nothing will be more agreeable to me. To put questions to the dark and understand its answers. It's a foolish work. This is Balassus's instructions. Every copy of this was destroyed centuries ago. I did devote a great deal of time to Balassus in my youth, but no longer. He is mystical when he should be clear, and clear when he should be mystical. These are all books of magic. Mr. Norrell, such. Surely you will find your answer here. Answer? To a simple question, sir. In the past, magic was done as a matter of course. It, it was as much a part of this country as the rain. Then 300 years ago, it died, seemingly overnight. We wish to know why magic has fallen from its once great state. We wish to know why is there no more magic done in England? It is a wrong question, sir. Magic is not ended in England. I myself am quite a tolerable, Practical magician. Well done. Well, it is done. Show these gentlemen out, children. Oh, absolute stripe. Oh, I'm so sorry, sirs, to see you bringing magic into such disrepute. This Norrell is lying. I, dis I disagree. I believe, Mr. Norrell. Did you see magic done? Or did you not? <laughs> Gentlemen, the answer is a simple one. Yeah. We shall invite Mr. Norrell to prove his ridiculous assertion, to do magic for us, yeah. and if he cannot, or will not, to lay off disturbing our peace of mind! Yeah. This is the hour and place he appointed, and he doesn't come. Mr. Norrell concedes defeat. Not at all. <clears throat> Who are you, sir? A word or two before you go in. If Mr. Norrell fails to do the magic he has promised, he will publicly withdraw his claim to be a practical magician, indeed a magician of any sort, and swears never to make any such claim again. 
is his hand on it. I'm sure he needn't go so far. We have no desire to punish him. However, my master only thinks it's fair to extract the same promise from each of you. Should he succeed? Where's the paper? There's the stuff to sign your name. Well, I do not believe he can do magic. And so... I will sign because I believe he can. And I hope he achieves recognition and will use his powers for the good of the nation in this time of war. Not sign. Magic is my life, sir. What shall I do when it is taken from me? We shall say Mr. Norrell's contract is with all members of the society, except Mr. Segundus. Sorry for it, sirs. Do not be. Magic is restored to England. 
I hope it can do some good. You think Mr. Norrell would be offended if I wrote to the London newspapers of this? I very much think he would be. But I rather think my master has hidden his talent long enough. It is time for him to take his place. And London is where I shall take him. Well, if that is how the first magician behaves, I dare not think what the second will be like. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The desolate plateau of the Iberian Peninsula. And on the battlefields of France and the Low Countries. Lord, we beseech your help in these times for our country, fighting a godless enemy. Lord, we ask for courage and wisdom. For the support of your grace and the endurance of your providence, which daily strengthens us. Amen. Well done, Henry. You're using your voice much better. More authority. Uh, yes, I, I think you have definitely improved, especially the, uh, the voice. Thank you, Jonathan. We'd saved a place for you. Oh, I did not see. I was at the back. Yes, right at the back. Do you want to sign any I, I've done everything you want in the way of... I hardly play cards. I drink very, very little, scarcely more than a bottle a day. And but I, I'm, I've no objection to going to church more often, twice a week, if you'd like it better. I leave such matters to your own conscience. I do not know. Perhaps you don't like my going to Bath or Brighton or... But really, the ladies there, you have nothing to fear from them. They are without doubt very charming, but... That hadn't even occurred to me. Oh. Arabella. Jonathan, I only wish that you would find a way to occupy your time. No one loves a holiday better than I, but perpetual holiday, is it? Does it make you happy? You make me happy. A man needs an occupation, Jonathan. Arabella, you know perfectly well that my father... I'm going away. What? With Henry to his new parish, help him settle. Oh. I'd not thought to do this now, but I see I must act. Jonathan, do not act. Think. And they'll be gone forever. It is cruel, sir, for a fellow of my age to be kept from taking up any useful position in the world. It is no wonder that I go to seed in this manner of which you so desperately disapprove. Which useful position had you in mind? Any, sir. Give it to me and I shall fill it. One more of those and you'll lose your position, sir. As for you, let me see. You have... Good God, man! For pity's sake, Father, have him close the window. The man is clearly ill. Open all the windows. I'm not blind, my son. This clergyman's girl wishes you to be a man of destiny. She does not know that you, like your mother, are weak and skittish and doomed to fulfill no function more useful than that of a clothes horse. Uh, my dear fellow. Leave him on your feet, sir. Stand beside the window. And you, sir, you proved yourself a failure in everything you've done. And you shall have no assistance in finding any occupation whilst I am yet living and master in this house. I had thought to ask your permission to marry your sister. And I'd rather think it is her permission I'll struggle to get. Some brandy in that, and it makes it taste much better. It is Sunday, Jonathan. I have a carriage to catch. Arabella loves you. She merely. I have tried. She just wishes you to have purpose. I have tried to buy an ironworks. The smelting room gave me a headache. I, I have tried to establish a business to collect fossils at Lyme Regis. Yes. Much too rainy. Have you have you been to Lyme Regis? Cannot your father? My father delights in torturing me as he tortures his servants. Tortured my mother. Jonathan, God will. 
a way will become clear to you, Jonathan. All I've ever truly wished for is your sister. It often happens in the most unexpected of ways. Goodbye, Jonathan. Do not drown yourself. I'll have one more. There's been a quarrel at the door. It's quite jump. Poor oh, fellow is ill. Who is as cold as a Scotsman's chimney? Father. Father. She regrets her absence in Cumberland. She does not like to think of me being alone and friendless at such a time. Well, I have an estate to run. I'm not to be without an occupation now. What sort of an interval do you think is appropriate? Eh? For me to ride up there and ask for her hand, Jeremy. To Cumberland. What sort of period of mourning do you think is fit? A month? Two weeks? Three days? And Mr. Noel, having taken a London house for the season. I have not taken it, I have bought it. 210 guineas. Having taken a London house for the season leaves us hungry to see which, if any, new wonders he will perform after the miracle of York. Miracle? The miracle of York. Are we to see the proof of his genius with our own eyes? Has magic truly returned, or is Mr. Norrell simply a wealthier version of the familiar conjurer in his yellow curtained tent? I have no. I have contented with this for 40 years. Stickers and disapproval. Now, this is where we have come here, is it not? We have come to change that. The star has reprinted Mr. Secundus's letter with illustrations. Why is London so expensive? So noisy. And the smell. Is that supposed to be me? With a beard and a pointy hat? I didn't have no disrespect, sir. That is what most folk believe a magician to look like. The magical Raven King. 300 years gone. And turns to feathers. of magic such an appalling name. Well, if nothing else, sir, you should pull that picture out of their heads. Listen, this is what you have worked for. This is your great opportunity. If all goes as it should here, when folk think of a magician. They will think of myself. Courage, sir. Charm. He's the Secretary of State for War. Remember what a gift it is that you offer, and I am sure it will be your friend. You, sir, are an embarrassment to your party and to this whole house. <laughs> Our forces are hopelessly outnumbered by the French. We stay in Salamander and be massacred, or lead our troops over the mountains and lead them to the snow. This is a 
final disgrace. The final act of a criminally incompetent government. Shame upon you. Shame! The Honourable Gentleman is well known for his excellent impromptu speeches, and it is good to know that the time he spends preparing them is not wasted. <laughs> I would have been happy to hear a deal less of it, but as Napoleon himself has said, you should never interrupt your enemy when he is making a mistake. There will be no retreat from Salamanca. I am a man of my word and a custodian of English blood. There will be no retreat. <laughs> Sir Walter! Sir Walter! What is this as may be to you, sir? I have an appointment with Sir Walter to talk about... magic. Oh, you're a magician. Miss Norris. Norrell. Sir Walter begs humbly that he may receive you at his private residence. Very glad to meet you, sir. Seems London talks a little else but the extraordinary Mr. Norrell. Please. Mr. Norrell is a magician man, a person of great reputation in his native county of Yorkshire. <laughs> and where are your fairy servants, sir? Are they visible only to yourself, or may others see them? Oh, uh, fairies are mythological creatures, madam. Mythological? I meant to say that they do not, they, they did not exist in the way the stories have them. They're a poisonous race. Their help is always regretted. It is always a heavy price. You are not at all what I expected. Hey, Steve. I have not formed a picture of Mr. Norrell, sir. I had heard you were a practical magician. I hope you're not offended. It's a great relief to see that you're nothing of the sort. You are a theoretical magician, I imagine. <coughs> they say you have something to ask me. <coughs> I... Well, that is to say, I beg your pardon, but I am, in fact, practical um, magician. But I very earnestly hope that I will not, by this admission, lose your good opinion. No, by no means. The, the misapprehension under which you labor, but by which I mean, of course, the belief that all practical magicians are charlatans, arises from the appalling idleness of English magicians in the last 300 years. I have performed one small feat of modern magic, which the people of York were kind enough to say that they found astounding. I am come, Sir Walter, to offer you my help in our present difficulties. You mean the war? Yes. My dear sir, what has magic to do with the war? I believe I have heard what you did in York, and I'm sure the housewives were very grateful, but I can scarcely see how such magic may be applied to the war. True enough, soldiers get very dirty. <laughs> sir, I made half a hundred stone figures talk in York Minster. It was nothing to do with housewives. My fiancé, Miss Wintertown. Oh, uh, enchanté, miss. Very fond of magic myself. There's a, wo a wonderful street magician, Vinculus. He's all oh, lies. No, no, no. Well, well, no. Street magicians are the very worst. All magicians are vagabonds. My dear Emma is to be married to Sir Walter at St George's in ten days' time. M many congratulations. <coughs> I am often ill myself. I find some warm lemon and nutmeg. Mr. Norrell, I'm not sure what help you hope to offer us. I'm sorry to say it will not do. Magic is not respectable, sir. The government cannot meddle in such things. Frankly, had I better understood what you were proposing to offer, I would not have agreed to meet you. Very well. Tolerably well. As bad as that, eh? You do any magic for him? This is not the way to the house. Hannibal Square is that way. We are going to Lady Godston's house. It's a soiree. A party. I wish to go home and read a book. Powerful gentlemen spend more time at parties than they do in Parliament. He 
You cannot do this from the comfort of your own fireside, sir. We're not in Yorkshire anymore. On the contrary. Nobody in London knows him better. We came here in the expectation of seeing something very extraordinary, such as we have read in the Times, and instead we've been forced to make our own entertainment. That gentleman is reading a book. I beg your pardon. <laughs> you do not know him as I. Mr Norrell has a shrewd notion of his own value. A gentleman who buys a house in Hanover Square. I beg your pardon. What? I am Mr Norrell. Oh, Mr. Norrell. I can scarcely begin to express my delight in making your acquaintance. I had mistook you, sir. But, but now that I behold you, I plainly see you have the measured and dignified air of a magical scholar. Lascelles, do you not think Mr. Norrell has the grave and sober bearing of a scholar? Suppose so. My name is Drawright. I have been your John the Baptist, sir, preparing the way for you. I knew we would be friends. Here we are, chatting so comfortably to one another. This is all for you, sir. Yes, I'm becoming aware of that. Let me announce you. And I pray, do not think it would be considered an insult to the company if you were to perform a trick or two of magic. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> The saviour of English magic, the magician of Hanover Square, Mr. Norrell! He has disappeared. <laughs> the rain shall make a door for me, and I shall walk through it. Oh, yes, you think yourself a very fine fellow. Holding books like a miser who's gone. Open up! Well, I have a book, sir. A book you won't find in your library or any other. It's written by the Raven King. And it tells me all about you. Big killers, magician of Threadneedle Street, at your service. Well, know this. Magician? Your coming was foretold long ago. I've been expecting you these past 20 years. Now I've come to explain your destiny to you, as is written in my book. Prophecies, is it? Well, magic cannot see into the future, and rascals who claim otherwise are liars! Show them These are the words of the Raven King! He was a charlatan, sir! Show them out! Two magicians shall appear in England. Two? The name of one shall be fearfulness, the name of the other... Arrogance. Did you say to The first shall fear me, 
the second you unlock the bar of me, the first shall bury his heart in a dark wood beneath the snow. Yet still feel its ache. The second shall see his dearest possession in his enemy's hand. Both will fail. The nameless slave shall be a king in a strange land. I will return. His words are not mine. I will return. I want him run out to London. You shall have some spells. I don't need any spells. What did he want? What? The man put himself to a great deal of trouble and risked hanging. What did he want? Skip a prophecy from the Raven King. Nonsense. The Raven King. He said he had a book. Nonsense. But if he does have a book, I want it, and then I want to go home to Yorkshire. To Yorkshire? We've only just moved here. This house is not respectable enough. Such a tiny library. But you're doing it wrong. You've got dozens of invitations to fancy houses, and you, you either turn them down or you scarp her. That's not how you get things done. Why do you not at least do some magic here? To show them. I'm not a performing monkey. How dare you bring down the packing boxes? Do you wish to make a success of this? Or do you not? There. Take these spells. Use them if you must. One penny spell! Two penny spells! <laughs> I've got a guinea spell for you, sir. Let me in for a some fortune into your sorry little life, sir. Pull out your purses and procure some curses. I can't even. For five shillings, I'll confer with the River Thames and find that runaway husband of yours. Hey? No? How much for your pies, mate? All the news, got. Ah, Mr. Norrell, sir. Draw that. You're John the Baptist. A moment of your time, sir. A spell to make an obstinate man leave London. One spell to discover what my enemy is doing presently. Well, you can tell the magician of Hanover Square that his spells have no effect, doesn't it? Because I haven't cast them yet. There's a true magician in England now. I know magicians and I know magic and I say this. All magicians lie. That one more than most. Oh, yeah. I think you and I had better have a chat. Okay. you? What? You left so suddenly last night, sir, and I had so much to say, and I'm sure we will be such friends. Really, you should use some calfskin gloves. And mind the spines, Lucas, the spines. You are not leaving, sir. I came here to restore magic to respectability and to do some good for the war. I'm clearly bound to fail. These men in government will not listen. Sir, if you will permit me, I know these men. Just a spell or two, it would have them embracing you like a brother. I only ask that I be the gentleman to introduce you to society. Just one small piece of magic. Like you did for the housewives in York. I have never washed any linen in my life by magical means or otherwise. Who invented this nonsense? I suppose it is no matter who. So where's this book of yours? You'll never have my book. You'll never even see it. It's my inheritance. From who? The Raven King. Well, you can't hide the truth from me. The cards of Marseille. Shall we see your fortune? For the present, your actions are governed by a hermit. Laurel. We knew that already. Ah, this one tells me you've weighed your choices and made a decision. This one tells me what it is. You go in one dream. You've a message to deliver. To him. Tonight. 
might have won. May expect a meeting. Leading to an ordeal of some sort, perhaps even death. The cards don't say whether or not you'll survive. But regardless, you will achieve your purpose. Do you know what I am yet? Well, there's nothing here that says you're anything more than a charlatan. Then you won't mind if I tell a fortune myself, then, will you? My fortune won't interest you. <laughs> Not yours. His. Donald's. He is at a crossroads, your magician. <laughs> Let's see which path he chooses, shall we? Someone's left a dirty thumbprint on a card. I drew these myself, there's only one king in the pack. Tell that to the magician of Hanover Square. His past, his present, his future. He is coming, you know. The raven is coming. <laughs> and his spell is about to be cast. Yeah! <laughs> I do not wish to attend soirees, dinner parties, or salons. I have offered my services to the country. They have been declined. I shall return to Yorkshire. Good day, gentlemen. Well, sir, you have your revenge, at least as far as Walter Pole is concerned. I'm sorry? Sir so Walter's bride is dead. Oh, poor thing. A thousand pounds a year and quite dead. She only contrived to remain alive till the end of the week. Dead? The young lady, huh? That is most unexpected. On the contrary, nothing was more likely. Sir Walter's need of the money is quite desperate. He spent a thousand pounds on the last election alone. It is a very dangerous thing to bring someone back from the dead. It has not been done in 300 years. No, no, I could not attempt it. Indeed, sir, no one proposes that you should. I know the form of it, but it is precisely the sort of magic I've set my face against. It relies so much upon... Well, th th that is to say, the outcome, it is quite unpredictable. It is quite out of the magician's power. No, 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 I shall not even think of it. No, sir, I understand. You have in mind a great act of magic, a testament to your extraordinary powers. I must say, I think the idea an excellent one. Should you succeed, all the poles in England will be on your doorstep. I have labored all this time to make magic my profession, respectable in the eyes of these men, and then still they despise me. Oh, my dear Mr. Norrell, such an opportunity is unlikely to occur again. With one stroke, you return to us that sweet young woman whose death no one can hear of without shedding a tear. And you re-establish magic as a power in the realm for generations to come. But there is scarcely any form of magic more dangerous. It is dangerous to the magician and... Furthermore, it is dangerous to the subject. But the subject, as you term her, is dead. What worse fate can befall her? And a brave magician, surely. I will need to send for more books. I'll make an excellent landowner, Jeremy. She will tell me that I will be bored, and I shall tell her about my plans for almshouses. It will demonstrate my concern for the plight of the common man. The common man over there is attempted to violently accost the other common man, sir. I suppose you brought a set of pistols, did you? No, sir. Jimmy, go and fetch me a large stick. I say, you, we are armed and ready. Sir! Shush! What? You'll wake him up. Who? The man under the hedge. He's a magician. If you wake a magician before his time, his dreams come after you and haunt you. Night of Wands. Two magicians shall appear in England. The name of one shall be free from this. 
The name of the other. Both will fail. My name is Vinculus, sir. For three days now, I have been walking westward in search of a man destined to become a great magician. Due to certain mystical signs, I can see that it is you. Two magicians shall appear in England. The first shall fear me, the second shall want to behold me. The first shall be governed by thieves and murderers. The second shall conspire at his own destruction. You do not make it sound very appealing. Choose someone else. <laughs> I did not choose you, magician. <laughs> you were chosen long ago. Well, whoever did the choosing will be disappointed. I am no magician. Then buy these two spells from me, sir. They'll get you started. I got them from a great magician in London. How much do you want for them? Seven shillings and sixpence, sir. Cough up. All right. All right. The name of slaves shall be a kin strange land. Here's you! Let's have you! Work out! That's a lot. Vagrancy! I'm not a vagrant, sir! I have money. <laughs> Who gave him money? For all It's time we were going, Jeremy. I pray remember me upon the moors beneath the stars. Good day, gentlemen. I will return. His words, sir, not mine. <laughs> I will return. When I take over the management of my own estate... You always told me you hated farming, Jonathan. Will such a thing do for you? Well, you once said that you would rather put out your own eyes and spend one moment managing the estate. Very well, I'm going to study magic. Will that do? Why on earth would you want to do that? I met a man under a hedge who told me I was a magician. Did you indeed? You do not believe me? No. On the contrary, it's all of a piece with your usual way of doing things. I purchased two spells from the man under the hedge. Would you like to see one? <laughs> Very dirty. We magicians do not regard a little dirt. Ancient, mysterious spells such as these. 2nd of February, three days ago. Indeed. <clears throat> a spell to make an obstinate man leave London. One spell to discover what my enemy is doing presently. Why on earth would you want to make people leave London? These are horrible, Jonathan. I require a mirror and something dead. Uh, Jeremy, those flowers. If we could find a mirror, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. If I make a success of this, might I then presume we are? Uh, uh, thank you. And uh, now, the flowers must be arranged like so. And uh, then I draw a circle on the mirror mm -hmm. like this. And then I quarter the circle. Jonathan, where did you get this nonsense? From the man under the hedge. Henry, do at least Henry, try it. That is not your ceiling. a little like the counting house. I know, Robert. Good magicians conjure up fairy spirits and long-dead kings. I appear to have summoned the spirit of a banker. But at least I am a magician. with all my heart, Sir Walter, that I might invite you up with me to see what it is I do. But the nature of this magic demands solitude. I will, I hope, have the honor of showing you some magic on another occasion. Do not send them away, sir. Gather as many of them around the bed as possible. Impress the servants. We should have brought some Chinese powders to throw on the fire. Bang! <laughs> uh, I wish to go to where Miss Wintertown is. This way, sir. We will stand quietly in the corner, sir, and afford any assistance. No. Sir, we... Gentlemen. I 
I have in mind to write a play based on this sorry affair. I shall call it, Tis Pity She's a Corpse. Greatest magician of the age. I, I am the man who is destined to restore magic to England. Well, obviously you are that, or I should not be here. But who are you? What magic have you done? Who was your master? I had no master. I taught myself from books. From books. There are some rather helpful books these days. At least they, they might be helpful when, when, when they're considered altogether. Should I agree to restore this beautiful young woman to life? What would be my reward? What, what sort of thing? Oh, my wishes are the most moderate things in the world. I simply wish to be able to aid you in your endeavors, to advise you in all matters, and to guide your studies. Oh, and you must take care to tell the world that your greatest achievements are due in large part to me. Well, were I the sort of magician who entrusts his business to other persons, then I would... But I fear, unfortunately, that I have no notion to employ you, or indeed, any other member of your race ever again. Well, this is most ungrateful indeed. Perhaps I would do better to speak to the other one. The other who? The other magician. Well, there is no other magician. I'm the only one. Of course there is another magician. He is your dearest friend in all the world. I have no friends. So you will not help me. I must confess that in recent centuries, I have grown somewhat tired of the society of my cousins and servants. I have need of new companions. And this young woman would be a charming companion indeed. me half her life, and the deal is done. What would her friends and family say if Half a were... life is better than none. How long is a life? How long would you like? Well, let us suppose that she might have lived until she was 94. And she's 19, that's another 75 years. 75 years, then? Exactly half of which belongs to me. Shall we sign something? No. No. I should take something of the ladies to signify my claim. One of her rings? No. Ah. Oh. And then you will go back. I am sorry. After you finish the spell, you will go away, not to come back anymore. You need never see me 
again. Emma? Miss Wintertown! What are you doing there? Open this door! For the love of Christ! What have you done? Dead presently. How unusual. I'm also rather like you in black. Let us dance. Um, you think? I don't feel it. <laughs> dance with me. <laughs> A miracle! The magician of Hanover Square has restored the young lady to life. My dear friend, Mr. Norrell. He has performed that which medicine could not. Physicians have abandoned her. The poor young lady lies in comfort, restored to 